Good morning and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School. We like to say it's the best school in the land. Why? Because we're learning how to live so we can live again. Today is August 9th, 2020. The title of our lesson is Hearing and Doing the Word. Hearing and Doing the Word. Our lesson scripture comes from James, the first chapter, verses 19 through 27. And our focus scripture is the same. The key verse, be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. James, the first chapter, verses 22. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day's journey. God, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, as we come before your mighty presence today to study your word through this lesson, God, touch our hearts so that we can understand the importance of being doers of your word so that you may be glorified in our lives every day. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So hearing and doing the word. Our lesson scripture, James 1, 19 through 27. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to to speak and slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not righteousness of God. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a doer of the word and not a, if any, be a hearer of the word and not a doer. He is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridle not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Our lesson scripture. As we move into our lesson today, James wrote the book of this book of the um, Bible. James gives very clear instructions about listening and acting in accord with the word of God. He also shows us how important it is to live out the word, just not only receive it through our hearing, but also activate it through our actions. It's important for us to just note that hearing is very passive. You don't have to do anything to hear the word of God. But when you are about to activate it, you must make sure that you put effort into walking out what the scriptures are, are saying to us. So doing the word of God is what our lesson focus is today. As we open up, in verse 19, James talked about let every man, every man, that means you, me, everybody, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to, to wrath. So swift, slow, slow. So let us think about hearing. God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. It is said that we are to, in order to become even wiser in our journey, it's very important to do much more listening than when we speak. So listening more than we talk. As we move through our lesson today, we would, invite you to come along in our introduction you will find these words 
The Bible is filled with many laws, rules, and commandments that believers are to follow. There are commandments about how we are to care for our homes and resources with which God has entrusted us. There are instructions about work life, taxes, tithe, etc., and information about spreading the gospel and praise and worship. The greatest commandment after loving God with all our being is to care for others, especially the lowest among us. This is how people will identify us as believers by the love we share with and show to others. If we are honest, we do not always follow his command as we should. And that is very true as, as we do our own self check. There are times we just don't do everything that we are supposed to do. That's where we have to continue in prayer and ask the Lord to forgive us and make us better. Uh, James is going to help us understand how to be better in our faith journey and in our walk with God. So one of the uh, comments that we used to always say in Sunday school is that we are all under construction. No one's perfect. No one has um, arrived. So if you meet people who think they are, that's a dangerous place because the Bible says, let a man who thinks he stands, takes heed, take heed lest he falls. That's where we have to understand that the safest space in the whole wide world is in the will of God and in the master's hand and in the master's plan. So as we move forward in our lesson, as you're following along, we're moving to this section called Telling the Bible Story. James began this chapter by encouraging us to press through trials as we press through trials we face, for they are necessary in developing our own being. Not only do our trials make us whole, they help us to reach our full capacity in order to be effective in the kingdom. So it is no surprise that James ends the chapter by telling us how we are to handle difficult situations. We are to be ready to hear what is being said. By listening intently, we leave very room for snappy or quick responses. It also keeps us from swelling with anger. This positions us to use what we've learned to bring freedom and salvation to others, which we are commanded to do so. We are not only to listen to God's word, but also follow the word's command. So now as we think about following the word's command, we must be able to understand what the word is saying in order for us to be able to do it. So as I like to share, it's so important at every moment that we can, available moment that we have, we should be wrapping ourselves around the word of God because God is speaking, but are we listening? It's very important for us to use the two ears that God has given us so that we can also be even more disciplined and obedient to the expectations of God. Again, doing requires efforts, requiring, requires effort, action, and intentions. We choose our behaviors every day. So there are times when people talk about, I got a mind to live right and a mind to do right. My mother used to say, give my children a do right mind. Well, we all need to have a do right mind. She used to say that in her prayers. But one of the things I've come to know and realize and understand is that your mind controls every part of your actions. You set your mind to do something and your actions line up. James is encouraging us today to be doers of the word. And that is where it's important for us to let our minds just align with that expectation. The Sankofa, the, 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 the historical component of our lesson, it is going to talk about 
an issue that we have heard about for years and years and years, separate but not equal. So as you read along, please follow. Does the practice of our religion reflect the God we serve? Ken Pell. 1954 was the year Brown versus Board of Education was finalized. The case was named after Reverend Oliver Brown, an AME pastor. The United States rendered laws establishing segregation in public schools unconstitutional. It was concluded that separate schools were not equal and states needed to be intentional and deliberate about ending the separation. However, Southern states were not pleased with the ruling and ignored the judgment of the Supreme Court. Court. Some white Southerners boycotted their schools, which were forced to segregate, while others lined up in droves and boycotted black Southerners who dared oblige the ruling of the court. In New Orleans, Louisiana, and Little Rock, Arkansas, this, despite the straightforward and non-negotiable command, white Southerners opted not to be doers. They proclaimed to be Christian, but their actions and words presented an uglier, hateful side. As a result, the villainous behavior of those against segregation rang loudly. Pictures and audios of their evil towards black students are forever part of their history. Their unrighteousness and refusal to uphold the command tempted them to keep black students in bondage in in bondage of unequal educational settings. But with the help of the National Guard and federal government, the students were liberated and the schools integrated. There's a lot of people who talk about doing and a lot of people who argue about what's good and what's not good. But there are other folks who are just, who just put their lives on the line for what is right. Robert Coles, The Moral Life of Children. It was concluded that separate schools were not equal and states needed to be intentional and deliberate about ending the separation. One thing um, that is very important for us as we move through this pandemic, and I'm talking about this racial inequality that we're seeing as a pandemic is that if we see something, we should say something. Many times our voices are all we have. So if we see injustice and we just sit in silence, what impact are we going to have? If you look at the life of Fannie Lou Hamer, who we studied last week, and then also look at the life of Congressman John Lewis, one life made an impact that can be felt for generations and generations. The other part too is that the fight is far from over. So let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we must continue to fight the good fight of faith every day. Our life application. Who are you? A hearer or a doer? I'll just ask that one more time. Who are you? A hearer or a doer? Many times you do not have to always answer certain questions. People can see what you do. They can always hear what you say. But our actions should be aligning to our faith our life application. James 1 verses 23 through 24 is often interpreted as a statement of physicality. It is taught that being a hearer and not a doer is something like looking into a mirror, but not able to picture their face once he is away from the mirror. But that is not the total truth. Verse 24 ends with a phrase, forget what they were like. It does not say look like. It says were like bringing attention to the person's manner or quality of being. This phrase goes beyond the traditional interpretation of a mirror as a looking glass to observe one's physical nature. In this context, the mirror is a metaphor for reflection, taking a look at oneself 
observing, soul searching, and having a revelation about the character one exudes, whether good or bad, and seeing oneself as one is. As soon as that period of reflection is over, one forgets everything that was revealed to him or her. He, she forgets the flaws that were exposed and or the opposite end forgets the gifts that were highlighted. He, she forgets her or his character, temperament, and even what initially led the meditation. She, he is sensitive and open in the moment, but once that moment passes, it's back to business as usual. No conversation, no transformation, no repentance. That is what it's like when we hear the word, but don't do the word. It goes into one ear and stays for a few minutes, depending on how long we're in the word, and then comes out the other. We must be careful. We have to make sure that we are listening to the right word. We must put the words of those who follow to the test, proof checking them with the word of God. We cannot just depend on a word preached on Sundays and midweek Bible teaching. We have to read God's word for ourselves in its entirety and in context so that we are not deceived by over highlighting passages and half truths. The right word pricks our hearts, motivates us to change and inspires us to be better. We have to move past just hearing and start to take action. So now when we hear the word, that's what we often talked about in church school is that when you come to church, you come to Bible study, you listen to the radio, you listen to the ministers that's constantly pouring out. What are you doing with the truths of the messages of the gospel? Are we using it to make ourselves even be in better alignment with the will of God? Or we just letting it pass by as if it doesn't even apply to us. One thing that is very important for us to understand is that God is constantly speaking to us, but are we listening and are we willing to take that step to be a doer, to be an active participant, to walk out the word every day? And that is important for us as we reflect on this lesson today. Are we doers or are we only hearers? I think it's high time for us to make that shift if we're just a hearer of the word and let's become doers so that God can be glorified even the more. The right word pricks our hearts, motivates us to change, and inspires us to be better. The right word pricks our hearts, motivates us to change, and inspires us to be better. We used to um, talk about, a, there was a, words of a song, and every round goes higher and higher. Every round. So as we keep walking through our lives, it should be our goal and mission to become better in so many ways when it comes to the things of God. And now, our questions. Verse 21 says the word has the power to save our souls. How does the word save our souls? I want you to go back to the verse which says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is the word that became flesh? Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So how can the word save our souls? The word can save our souls through believing on the name of Jesus Christ and accepting that he paid it all on Calvary's cross. Question two, verse 25a says, the word will liberate us. How? How will the word liberate us? Well, there's another passage that says, whom the Son sets free 
is free indeed. When Jesus touches our life and we become a brand new uh, creature, we ask God to come down and make his, our heart his home. He lives in us. He begins to um, just touch us in ways. I used to hear the, our forefathers say the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. The places I used to go, I don't go anymore. I looked at my hands and my hands look new. I looked at my feet and my feet did too. So when God comes into our lives, he literally liberates us from a, a, a space of sin and understanding that when we are saved and saved because of his grace, we are liberated. And that is the... Um, best liberty that you can ever have. Amen. So again, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And knowing that you're free. So many times people like, but you don't know what I did. You don't know what I was into. It doesn't matter because there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You have to understand that when the Lord sets us free, that's true liberation. Question number three, verse 25, B says the word will open doors for blessings. Explain how the word opened doors for blessings. Now the Bible says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done. So it says that. And so I'm going to challenge you as I'm putting these verses out, you go look them up because I'm not going to say book, chapter, verse. I want you to look it up, be challenged. And in all that I get and get an understanding, but you will find that scripture that if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You can ask what you will and it shall be done. What blessings, what doors that we want open? Begin to ask God. He is the great provider for us all. Question four, the lesson highlights the history of desegregation in the United States schools and the current U.S. immigration policies and how some Christians have responded to these actions that do not match God's words. Are there other examples in current events that demonstrate how believers' actions do not match God's word? Share and discuss. Well, if you look at the current news reports, there are people who are saying they're believers, but they're voting to enact oppressive policies. All I'm going to say is that you shall know them by their fruit. But the other part that we have to remember is that we must pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And that is going to move us toward our closing devotion. What does a doer look like? Over the next few days, take time to look over through today's text and identify all the ways we are to be doers. Write your list below. Take each morning or evening to ask yourself, am I a doer in this way? How so? Ask God to reveal to you which areas of your doing needs to be stronger. And if it is your desire, pray that God strengthens you your actions in these areas. Remember, those who look into the perfect law and the liberty of the law and persevere being not hearers who forget but doers who act they will be blessed in their doing james 1 and 25. what an amazing lesson today that just reminds us of the importance of hearing and doing the word of god so that we were reminded today to be doers of the word and not merely hearers because who deceive themselves. Be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. We thank God because every day we have a new opportunity because the Lord has given us a brand new day of mercy 
to even walk through his grace. So as we continue to draw nigh unto God, let us continue to pray that he will allow us to be doers so the world can see the light that is so important to be shown in these times. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you would just bow as we have a closing prayer. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for allowing us to receive your word as a reminder to be doers of your word and not merely hearers. Help us to draw nigh unto you. You promised you would draw nigh unto us. Touch everyone that's under the sound of my voice and Lord, be glorified in their lives. Master, we're asking you to heal this land. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for the, your time today. And we hope to see you next Sunday. And may the Lord God continue to bless you real good.